even though I was, I would have breakthroughs as a coach, I would like have, they would be like short lived. Like I'd have a breakthrough in an area and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I've had this breakthrough. I see the light so differently. Things are going to change. And then something would trigger me and I would be like in breakdown all over again. My negative Mm -hmm. emotions were hanging on to me like a ball and chain. My mind used to be on a hamster wheel. Like I would overthink, I would have massive anxiety. Like if like one out of a hundred, it was 150. I was constantly worrying about what other people thought and said, constant worry. Mm -hmm. Um, Thanks for sharing that. Again, negative emotions would drive me, guilt, fear, especially guilt, anger, even anger inwards. Like, and I just, this work has truly been able to let it go. Food and weight obsession can be exhausting. Losing weight, gaining weight, dieting, feeling like a failure because you missed a workout, binged, overate, or gained all the weight back. The cycle is endless and it can be maddening, but I'm here to say you can stop the mental madness. You can take back control of your food behaviors, but you have to face your fears. You have to ask for help and make a change. I am Leslie M. Thornton, permanent weight loss coach from hpwl.co. This is hypnosis for permanent weight loss, and I know you can make this happen. On this podcast, you will hear how to stop the mental madness, love your body, trust your food decisions so you can create a life of happiness, freedom, and inner peace. Hello, everyone. Leslie M. Thornton, Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss. Today, we have Bridget Sobus with us. Bridget and I met last summer, 2021. Um doing our NLP trainers training, which was amazing for those people who follow me for a while. You've heard me talk different things about neuro-linguistic programming and my training last summer and the transformation it provided and all that good stuff. And was lucky enough to be in the same group with Bridget and got to learn a lot about her and her story, which is really amazing and like will blow your mind in a lot of amazing ways and bring lots of inspiration. Um, and transformation as a result of listening to this. So I just wanted to have her on um, to uh, increase our vibes and know it's possible when we get into the subconscious mind and do that work um, and share it with you because that's what we do here. So Bridget, thanks for being here. I'm so excited to be here with you, Leslie. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I had the pleasure of getting to visit you in Chicago in this awesome apartment that you're Mm -hmm. at. And she already let us know that her amazing English bulldog might be barking as we're uh, on this today which is great her dog is very cute she might jump on the bed behind me you know great i hope she does a a bit you know yeah she's an old english bulldog her name is rosie she's a little over two she's a little punk i call her my punkaroo (laughs) she like slept with me every night and she was just really cute and fun and playful and everybody she's a crowd pleaser as we went for walks with her it was like everyone was just stopping us like (laughs) Wow, way to pick the dog that everyone's like enamored by. Like, I don't think I've ever been with such a dog that caused such an attention grabber anywhere yeah. that I've gone before. So thanks yeah. for giving me that experience yes. with Rosie. She that loves you. She misses you. Oh, so sweet. Perfect. Well, let's dive in, Bridget. If you want yes. mind sharing, I feel like you, yeah, have shared your story before of just like, I know you made a major life shift in six months, like major. Yeah. So yeah, if you wouldn't mind sharing what that was, we're excited to hear. Yeah. So uh, just a little bit of background of background of who I am and where I came from. Um, I'm originally from Chicago. I did become a nomad about a year and a half ago. So I, I travel around a bit around the country with my dog. So I don't have a permanent residence as of now. Um, but I started my career out as a hair colorist. Um, I was a master certified colorist. I was making a six figure income. I, um, was working at a salon that was pretty dysfunctional making six figures. And I thought if this guy can own a business, 
There's absolutely no reason why I can't. I don't know how many of you out there have thought that yourselves. I'm sure you have. So I decided to buy this dysfunctional salon and then guess who became a dysfunctional mess? Me. So I became a dysfunctional mess. And I, if you knew me like 17 years ago, I was growing, trying to lead a team and I was a hot mess crying. And I uh, decided to hire a coaching consultant. So that's actually what led me. That was one of the catalysts that led me to become a coach. Mm -hmm. um, so fast forward, um, I was turning the business around, you know, by 30%. 40%. I was a top award-winning salon in North America for 13 years in a row, a salon today, top 200. I did small business consulting work. And then, you know, I've had some, I've had some traumatic years in all that experience. It was, is definitely, I've had a roller coaster of a ride. Um, the first traumatic experience I had was that I decided I was married. I got married um, before I owned the salon. And then during owning this business, I had, you know, this very successful business. We were owning real estate together and I found out, unfortunately, uh, there's lots of bills that weren't getting paid um, and uh, mortgages weren't getting paid. Uh, and I had no idea, like I'm running the salon. I thought he was running the, the properties. And then I found out that our buildings were going to foreclosure and there were other challenges in our marriage as well. He has passed on to another life. So I've, you know, made peace with him and all the things, but we went through a pretty nasty divorce. So that was my first traumatic event. And coming out of that, I got diagnosed with, you're all free and clear of this, by the way, breast cancer, everyone's healthy around here. And that led me to, um, you know, having breast cancer, luckily for all of you entrepreneurs out there, less, this is a lesson that I learned and I teach my, um, you know, all the people I coach is like more, the more you systemize your business, it's going to give you freedom. So I did have freedom in my life at the time to take a seven month leave of absence off work so that I was healing myself, getting myself back a couple of years, you know, a couple of years later from the, you know, after a math of the divorce, I found myself in $1.3 million of debt. And uh, that was a pretty hard pill to swallow because I wanted to get out of the, um, I wanted to get out of the marriage so bad that I was like, I will take 100% of the debt on. I just need to legally get, get this complete. Mm -hmm. So between the buildings and all the other debt I took on, um, I personally, my salon was great. You know, salon was doing awesome, but personally, I found myself in that kind of a debt. And I had all these people saying, you need to file bankruptcy. And I was like, if I file bankruptcy, I'm at risk for losing my own business. And they're like, yeah, but if you don't, then you're going to be in a lot more trouble. So I took the risk. I filed and I decided to buy my own business back. I was, I became super ego driven and I was like, there's no way bankruptcy is taking my business away from me. I actually, part of me was falling out of love with owning a hair salon. I was actually leaning more towards doing coaching and consulting work. But I would like, again, ego got the best of me. And I was like, hell no, I, I'm not going to be embarrassed. I won't be shamed. I won't be this. So I negotiated trying to buy my own business back for like $75,000 uh, in one year. Like it was a big undertaking. And I started going into survival mode. And I was like bending over backwards. I was taking out these crazy loans. I was actually going back into bankruptcy, feeling like I was going back into bankruptcy after filing bankruptcy. It was, it was crazy. So yeah. And I just after, want to pause because like so yeah. much power in what you're saying. Like, so obviously when you're in this, it's the worst case scenario. Like I'm sure anyone's listening that like some I've talked to many people who have also had to file for bankruptcy or like gone through a major divorce or and it's like and from an outside perspective looking in though there's always like to me it's like this like magical tornado happening of like oh my god like Bridget's life is out of alignment with what's supposed to be happening 
And like, she's such this powerhouse, like amazing leader, amazing business owner, gonna do whatever it takes, right? Like you said, like ego is taking over, but yeah. like the universe or whatever was trying to like give you the sign to like, this is how bad you need to break free of these chains and get out of this situation, yes. you know? And like the fight back to not have that be that way right of just like nope not on my watch but it's amazing because it's and inspiring to me because of the amount of risk you were willing to take i mean yes. how old were you at the time like i feel like so that what so i just turned 49 so let's think so like in you're 39 so by 2000, the way oh 49 i, I said you look like you're 39 oh, you. <laughs> i feel like i'm 39 yeah but i um so I guess, yes. So that was, uh, in 2019. So what is that? Three years ago, four, four, oh, year, four years ago. Yeah. Now. yeah oh going on four God. years ago. So you, let's do the math. 46. Uh, oh my God. 45, 46. Let's, okay. So I still there. have time to have my life turn into a natural disaster. Is what you're telling me. <laughs> you're pretty clear really that. that. Pretty yeah. clear. Learn, from my <laughs> learn from my lessons. <laughs> Yeah, I'm learning yes. from your lessons. Yes, please. But anyway, so yes, would love to hear. Keep, yeah, what else? What yeah, happened after so, that? You got it? That yeah, you go so back? Yeah, 2019, mm -hmm. I called it the dark night of the soul year. Did you, if you heard that snorting, that was Aww. my dog. I you, call it the dark night of the soul year. It was just, I was like, a, again, ego, so hard ego driven. I was going against what my mentors had been recommending me to do like Bridget let go of that business you have a bigger game to play in life and I was just like again trying to hot be hide look good and it was so like the universe was really giving me a big kick in the ass like let's go and then finally 2019 I was being even transparent with my own team like I told them what was going on and at first they're like oh whatever you whatever we can do to help and like Honestly, it did not go that way. I actually had a walkout. <laughs> and that was part of the people pleaser in me during that time, like trying to make everyone else happy, get having them have their own, having them, they were all making way more money than I was. Let's put it that way. And mm -hmm. then like, I let a couple mm -hmm. people that were negative in there, not, I didn't let them go. And it was just, yeah. So culture, that's another thing. Keep an eye on your culture, business owners um and people pleasing like i've actually been able to take the people pleasing hat off um so end of 2019 i reached out to one of my mentors i'm like i can't this isn't working anymore i need help and she graciously like started helping me i started i didn't even have any money but i found money to invest in having a mentor again and then i put the salon in the market and then uh the stay-at-home orders were going on and i was like i just want to sell this place like I'm done, this chapter is over. Hmm. So I did sell it two summers ago and I just started like changing my life. I started getting a therapist. I started getting a coach again. I started, I was like, oh, I just want to have a baby consulting company now, like my own little consulting company. Cause I was working for another company as a consultant and a coach. So it was a tent, like a independent contractor. So I was like, oh, I'm like kind of seeing this little baby glimpse of like, oh, I just want to, play small and like have this little coaching company and all the things. And, and then I had been, um, a, one of my mentors had our, as always say it said, and I'm a master of NLP. And she was actually the person that introduced me to the coach training program that I went through to become a part of the international coach federation. And I was, I would always look up to her, but I had no idea what she meant by NLP. But she would kind of sometimes when she would coach me or any other person on our the team that I was at the, on at the time, she'd be like, and then visualize what you're what you're gonna be like. And like back then, the because I was actually diagnosed with cancer, uh, pri oh like right after um, prior to filing bankruptcy, I actually got diagnosed with breast cancer. And I would sm say things like, oh, and I have to go to the hospital and get poked and prodded. And she would be like, oh, well, what if you visualized it like this? Like you're having your life be healthy and you're going there for like the healthy reasons. And I would just, it wasn't connecting with me, but she would still say like, I'm a master of NLP. 
And then throughout the years, you know, I was like, you know, getting my life back, thinking I want to have this baby coaching program. And then I was like, you know what? That's it. I'm going to get certified in NLP work. So I found a company and they're like, you're also going to get timeline therapy and hypnosis. And I was like, I don't even know what that means, but okay. <laughs> so it was the, one of the most life-changing experiences I've ever had. Like I knew going into that week. So it was about a little, about almost a year and a half ago. I was going into that week of my training and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know my life is going to be so different coming out of this training. I wasn't even like halfway through the training and I'm always already talking to my uh, leader and I was like, do you, can I, you, can I work with this comp? Can I work with you guys? I'm, uh, I love training and developing and I'm looking for a company to align myself with. And he was like, oh yeah, you, you can actually become a trainer of this work and you can train it yourself. And I was like, I'm all in. I don't even know what that meant, but I'm like all in. I used to have so many, even though I was, I would have breakthroughs as a coach. I would like have, they would be like short lived. Like I'd have a breakthrough in an area and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I've had this breakthrough. I see the light so differently things are going to change and then something would trigger me and i would be like in breakdown all over again my negative mm -hmm. emotions were hanging on to me like a ball and chain like you could not like anger like i didn't seem like i was an angry person but like now i can talk about my divorce and bankruptcy like it was just something that happened to me where if like prior to this work you would see me like i'd get heated up all over again and it would almost be like fueled with a fire where now the fire's gone and the anger's gone and now I can just talk about it like it just happened. So that was like my segue into NLP work. And then from there, I was like, I'm having a coaching academy. I'm going to train people how to do this work. So that's like literally how I changed my life in like six months or less. Like got my master's certifications. I got my train the trainers. Then I launched my academy. It's called the Power and Joy Coaching Academy. And now I've, I'm getting ready to do my fourth um, certification program in November. So I just absolutely love this work. I've turned my life around. I've got money in the bank. I make money. I make a difference in the planet. So that's where I would say I literally changed. I mean, my life was changing in baby steps, but like to catapult it that quickly that's what the work did for me. Which is really cool. You know, there's a lot of things right now that's talking about how, you know, the pandemic and what's going on politically and what's going on, you know, with warfare and just like all the different, you know, and with the economy right now, yeah. you know, that, that, you know, there's one aspect of being like fear, terror, whatever. But then there's this other aspect of like the people who are meant to heal, you know, human beings and to get them to become more conscious and awake so that we have a chance of survival as human beings on the planet are like being forced to wake up fast and it's just so cool to me to be like wow bridget was like so required to be part of this army of conscious leaders that it needed to give her the boot in this huge drastic way you know to to be doing what you're doing today so yeah. thanks for being brave enough to go through all of that and i i have a few questions but my first one is like where do you think that your chutzpah has come from in your life like where did how did you become this powerhouse salon owning you know all the things that you just said where does i've that never come heard from? the word chutzpah really a little bit i mean like I think it's like a Jewish word, actually. Where it's just like it? chutzpah, like it's like your, like passion, like your motivation I mean, I to do that, something. But I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so where did I get that? I, you know what? I it's such it's such an interesting question because, like, how did I become a salon owner? Like, I just it's so because I was even I was on a, a call today with one of my colleagues who does NLP work and. um we were just talking about stuff. And sometimes I was like, you know, I feel like when I was in high school, I was always just like a CB student, but I didn't really apply myself. Like I would, if I would have applied myself, I would have been an A student. And then, so I kind of just coasted through high school and grade school. And then I didn't even know what the heck I wanted to do with my life 
when I got out of high school. Like I went to junior college and then I was like, oh, I'm going to be a flight attendant. Oh, I'm going to be a travel agent. Oh, I'm going to work with kids. Oh, I'm going to like, it was just all, it was just bouncing all over the place. Oh, I'm going to work in retail, you know? And then one day I was like, I'm going to go to beauty school. <laughs> cool. My parents are like, okay, well, so we hope you take this seriously. And it was, I did. I took it seriously. Like I loved it. I loved everything about it. I immersed myself into it. I studied it. I worked under like the best mentors. And then I, you know, wanted to become a master at it. And then I don't know, all of a sudden it was this drive in me. And I read this book when I was in my late twenties, um, called rich dad, poor dad by Richard Kiyosaki. And then that was another catalyst for me to start paying all my debt, becoming serious about um, investing and saving my money and creating wealth. And then that went to, yes, me working in the dysfunctional salon. And I was like, if this guy can do it, so can I. I mean, it was a lot more than just buying a salon there's a lot more to becoming an owner and successful but that was just it it was just kind but of amazing for you to like, have that experience also of like mm. getting to see like and there was obviously this part of you that's just like i want more you know like i like if he can do it i can do it and then that like it seems like you just know when something is for you and you just immediately yeah. take action on it yeah which is part of being a leader is like how quickly can you make decisions Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, Colin Powell, the war leader said, you know, I wait until I have 45% of the information and then I take action. If I wait until I have 65%, I've waited too long and people have died. Gotcha, yeah. And what I'm hearing and the people, you know, I have other colleagues that like they're right, that their decision making is faster than mine. Right. And it's just like you always go farther and faster. It's like the same as the book Go for No, which is like the whole premise of it is failing faster intentionally because mm -hmm. the the faster you fail the more successful you'll become more quickly yeah and so it's just like wow you know to me it's just like wow like the bravery that comes along with that is yeah insane. sometimes i yes i definitely can make decisions where i don't really think about it i just do it which I, is cool because it feels like it's this inner knowing and you're just like done yeah, like so like you were like, like into all the things and then you were like beauty school. I'm going to beauty school. And you did it so hard and so fast and so well. Right. Like did the owner thing, whatever. Like and then NLP came along and you're just like done all the way in master trainer, start your own academy. Like, yeah, it's been incredible. Off. I love the work. It's amazing. It's yeah. So, so it's tell us about it. So what about it? Do you love so much? I know that I have people currently enrolled in my NLP training coming up in the fall. Um, and it is, it's something that, like you said, when you first met the NLP master coach that you were working with and she kept, it's like, I don't really know what that is. And she was trying to like turn around what you were saying, like, and then, you know, you get in there. So like, what, what is it about it for you or what did no, you? Learn. Yeah, I, I really, so my mind used to be on a hamster wheel. Like I would overthink, I would have massive anxiety. Like if like one out of a hundred, it was 150. I was constantly worrying about what other people thought and said, constant worry. Mm -hmm. um, Thanks for sharing and I, that. Again, negative mm -hmm. emotions would drive me, guilt, fear, especially guilt, anger, even anger inwards. Like, and I just, this work has truly been able to let it go, you know? And then when something comes up for me, like I still feel emotion. I actually got angry last weekend, like the most angry I've been in like a couple of years. And I've felt the feelings like, you know, at, you know, I got a little support and then like, I just moved through it. Now when I like look back at how angry it was, it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> but but before if that would have mm -hmm. happened i would have been like stewing about it probably for like week, weeks months thought 100%. about it again what i got angry about and it would just been like more and more and more so right. it's not it like only just traumatizes like, the past wounds. yeah obviously with my clientele you know they're using food and sometimes alcohol is a way to numb mm -hmm. you know and it's just like that's what we we're just talking about in our recent coaching call is how like in the past you might have made a mistake or gotten really mad or a certain situation was really stressful and you eat something or you numb away 
but it then it would have you would have continued doing that like you're saying like every time you think about it like it doesn't actually go away unless we actually get to the root yep. and actually allow yourself to feel the full experience of the feelings that you're feeling or have some nlp tools to like move past it um and so therefore your body can stay within like the same amount of weight whereas before you didn't have any control over it because you didn't know how to actually get past your emotions so yeah. Yeah. So you, you used a coach, it sounds like, or you called for some kind of support. Did you use any NLP tools or? Uh, you know, I mean, probably some timeline therapy on myself. Yeah. Um, yes. The person that I was able to get a hold of, she's NLP trained. So yeah. So just helping me like reframe my thoughts. So there definitely, there are times I, I, I reach out for, reach out for help. Absolutely. You know I mean, I don't, I like, I practice what I preach, you know, like therapists need therapists, coaches need coaches. So, yep. and if definitely, if I, I know people that even if they are my friends, they can step outside and become a coach and like mm. support me. Um, so I definitely practice what I preach on all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but Amazing. also I love what the, the difference it makes for my clients. Yeah. You know, I've yeah. been having like past clients of mine that I've coached and consult that um, are small business owners. Now they're taking the certification course so that they can implement it into their their leadership skills and who they're being as leaders and letting that negative emotions um, let go or that their limiting beliefs and thoughts go. So yeah. and then when I do breakthrough work with people, you know, I just I've been coaching a couple separately to have breakthrough sessions and like they've are like i are, it was real so cool like i have a video testimonial from the wife and she's like oh my gosh this has been like some of the best two weeks of my life she's like i finally she said she shoved down her feet she wasn't even letting herself feel anymore she hadn't felt joy in so long and she was now i'm like laughing and she goes i have tried all these different modalities of therapy. I've done self-help work. I've done other types of mo workshops or whatever. And she goes, this is finally the thing that like helped me the quickest, soonest, fastest. So it's like mm -hmm. a lot, very immediate results, which I love. Amazing. Yeah. There's nothing like having people go from like dead inside, depressed, anxious, like some of them you never would even know they're like doing fine on paper you know but then when you really get in there it's like they no joy you know numbing away a lot obviously yeah. with the work that i do and um yeah needing to get out of that space and then seeing them shift it literally can be that quickly yeah. of just like one tool and it's like you watch their face literally change in front of you and it's like mm -hmm. what <laughs> <laughs> it's the most gratifying kind of work that can be done. And what I love about NLP the most is how, I mean, there's so much these days about conscious leadership and how in order to actually, because it sounds like when you were running the business, the salon, right? And the person who owned it before you owned it, like it sounds like you hadn't done the deeper dive into yourself yet. It was all just trying to manage and control and whatever you know but in order to actually have a sustaining business and you actually don't end up sick or you know like unfortunately happened with you but you're past it now mm -hmm. right is is that we yeah then you're gonna end up in a situation that's like a tornado because it's like yeah. it's not it can't be it's not going to be sustainable in that way so with nlp i love that it has the blend of let's actually learn how to communicate in a way that works which translates over into relationships, like career, otherwise, oh, right? Yes. Like everywhere. everywhere. It's just like how to like be in control of any environment that you're in by being the best possible human being you can imagine. Yes. It's like, is there anything better to study than that? You know, it's like literally like one of the definitions is just like, the study of excellence and how to be excellent in every area of your life it's like yeah. uh yeah that sounds wonderful thanks for that you know so it's like the outside communication for all the things which communication is everything you know like without communication nothing can be created at all but then also like when we're creating we naturally hit roadblocks 
you know, and the roadblocks in the subconscious minds, which lives in the body that prevents us from actually making everything get to that next level or to experience the joy or the creation that you're actually looking for. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of my favorite things about being a, an entrepreneur, or like a conscious business owner is that like, there's, I'm looking at it from this outside perspective. And the more that I'm doing the work, you know, and growing internally, the more that the business continues to like take whatever shapes mm -hmm. or, you know, the people that come or the people that go or whatever. And it's just like, it's almost like I'm watching my inner self, like in an external thing, you know, and even like the clients that get attracted. And it's just like, yesterday I was literally getting ready for one of our client calls and I was, and was like weeping, like so grateful for these accelerator clients of just like, no, like, I love these people. Like if they knew how much I love them, Oh my god. They might be scared of me. <laughs> well, but that's so funny when you said you're just crying. Like this attitude of like you yep. are invested in this program like yes, it's for you, but it's also mm -hmm. helping me to become the leader I need to become every day, right? And then I'm like just infusing them with everything that I'm learning like in real yep. time. Yep. And it's just such a privilege. It's just the yes. most amazing experience. And I feel like without NLP, I would never have that perspective. I wouldn't be able to actually be present to what I'm talking about right now of like just the, the stellarness of our day-to-day -day reality and like yeah. what it is showing us about who we are and what we're becoming. Like to me that there's nothing more <laughs> I use amazing that than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the stel stellarness. That's a good word. <laughs> it's pretty stellar. It's like interstellar. Yeah. I should have stars behind me. Well, it's so you do, like flowers. I just had the same experience. Like I um was coaching um so there's a part there's a uh, two owners in a small business that I coach and they they just took my certification program in August of the NLP certification and um I had been coaching them like throughout the year and I was like, you know, enrolling them in to do it. And like, so they took it. Now I'm having a the regular coaching and consulting calls and like hearing about what they're implementing in the business and hearing them use all the tools. And I'm not even kidding you. I started crying and I was like, I'm, I'm crying because I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so happy. Like, and like you're doing the work, you're like implementing it, and you're changing your business and you're changing all the things. And and then after the call was over, like at night, one of them text messaged me and she's like, you, I'm, we're so appreciative of you. And we're, I just, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, my heart is just overflowing. <laughs> cause like, cause they're a ripple effect. Like every light they touch makes everybody else is life better and that just is like a ripple effect on the world which i think is I one of the most powerful things it's absolutely incredible i love working with leaders because of that you know whatever that looks like you know it's just like even parents or whatever it's just like literally we're changing so many people just one person at a time yep. and it is it's so extremely moving and it's brave for people to do this kind of work like most people don't want to go into the territory of feeling feelings and looking in the past or like many people can't you know and don't and won't um but the hope is that the new addiction becomes like wow what else don't i know about what i don't know <laughs> yeah and what other layer of the onion can i peel back you know to keep mm -hmm. making that difference that i want to make or you know whatever that looks like so when you were in your NLP training, what was the most transformational tool? Timeline therapy. It's a big, amazing one, yeah. isn't it? Timeline therapy for letting go of deep rooted negative emotions and limiting beliefs. It's the best. Anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, shame. Yeah. And then whatever it's else is so under, good. under there. It's hmm? so good. So good. And no, it's like no one really knows what it is. No, I find mm -hmm. most people have never heard of it. I didn't hear of it. Right. I just think it's groundbreaking work. It is, it is seriously the tool. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. They all intertwine and work together, but like that is the thing that like my light switch flipped up and it stayed up. Yeah. Whoa. Timeline therapy is amazing. 
That just gave me a visceral reaction in my body when you just said that. Like it went up and stayed up. Yeah, it stayed and up. What do you it think about like it? Back and forth, flipping back down. Yeah. It was like, what do you think up. it is about that tool that had it stay up or your experience that you had? Uh, I mean, it's just this unconscious mind work. Like truly get going back in your unconscious mind and remove. So like you think about a, a like a root, the root cause of the problem. Like you're pulling out. So if you think about a weed. Okay. And if you pull a weed out and you leave roots behind, it grows back. Well, timeline therapy literally will take every little last root out. And that is where it gets disconnected. And then the problem disappears. Yeah. So that's, that's just the coolest thing. Like I said, like, you know, it's like when I tell people, I'm like, you're not going to become a zombie. You're not going to become a void of feelings. You're not going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm just this way of sunshine, like constantly. Like you're not <laughs> going to be over the top that, you know, like that. However, you will feel more of that. You will feel more happiness, more joy, more of the positive emotions. And then when you feel your, the, the negative ones, because negative emotions, it is healthy to have those feelings at times. Fear and guilt are probably one of the most useless ones. However, yeah. it is healthy to feel a range of emotions, but they're, they don't get to be in charge of you anymore. You get to be in charge of them. And when you have them, it's like, okay, feel my feelings. What did I, what did I learn? What happened? What was missing? Where do I go ne from next? You get to have more choices and possibility in your life. Mm, it's so powerful. Yeah. And as I, I feel like what's so powerful about that first time that you have that kind of experience is just like, you can never from that point on, when you first realize that you can get past like a horrible, angry thing and see exactly where it came from. Right. For our clients who do a lot of like reparenting and like they bring up a lot of, right. And this, I feel like can even go back to even more of the root mm. of cause of the situation. But once you, it's like, and then you like have that awareness and then you let go of the feeling and then you replace it with a new thought and then you can like be, and then come back into now and you feel that like expansion of your body. It's like that happened like that, yes. you know? And like the first time that that happens for someone, right? For me, it was with hypnosis of being like, I'm extremely obsessed with food. I absolutely, you know, like this is a horrible situation that I've been in my whole life and I'm going to have to deal with it forever, you know, to doing hypnosis and waking up the next day and being like, that's not true anymore. Mm -hmm. And one night was like, I could never not know that again. Right. Another NLP tool that I was given by my aunt when I was like 13 or something was I had a headache. She had me close my eyes, imagine the shape of it, the color of it, the texture. Right. She had me oh. doing NLP stuff. And then she had me open my eyes. And like prior to her doing that, it was like headache, Tylenol, headache, Tylenol, like headache, Tylenol. Like that's just what you do. Sure. It was like headache, go in, visualize, talk about it, be with it, feel it more open your eyes, it's gone, was like, what? <laughs> it was like, never can you be the same again after you have those initial experiences of something like that going away and it's like a different reality, which gets yeah. into spontaneous healings, right? Which I talk about with Dr. Joe Dispenza's work all the time, mm -hmm. right? Of people who spontaneously remiss from all these diseases and the only thing that's like in alignment with how they all got past their disease was that they believed with 100% certainty that whatever choice they were using to eradicate their disease was absolutely going to cure them. Yeah. Curious if you have any takes on that with your experience with your breast cancer. Yeah, because unfortunately I've had it twice now and I'm actually, I'm at the tail end of my healing. So I, I am so, be, I so believe in that mind body connection. That's why I'm so committed that my life moving forward, I just have healthy mindset, mind, body, and soul, because I, because it's just, this is my belief system. And for all of you out, for you listening to this, I'm speaking to you, do your mm -hmm. own research as well. I am not a physician. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I just may play one on TV sometimes. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is just my belief system of what I've been, what I follow and who I read. Like you just mentioned Joe Dispenza. Like mm -hmm. I believe that me having breast cancer for the way it happened with me, I was like, I went through a divorce, super traumatic two years of my life. 
I'm in the healing stages of my life. I'm feeling awesome. Like a year and a half later, I'm ra- I'm training for the Chicago Marathon, by the way, and I'm raising money for the American Cancer Society in honor of my father. And I get the diagnosis and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like I'm training for a marathon. What? Anyway, went through treatment again, you know, would heal my body. And then fast forward a few more years again. Now I'm, I, I decided to file bankruptcy buy my business back 2019 dark night of the soul year, I call it. And then again, fast forward another year and a half. And I'm, on, I feel like I'm on top of the world. I'm I'm growing this brand new, this company that I'm actually love. And I know I'm going to do this work when I'm in my eighties, just because of the love of it. And I get a, a second diagnosis and I'm like, it's just too strange to me that, and if some of the research I've read is like that when it comes in the breast for women, it's from an aftermath of trauma. And it's when it actually shows up in the healing stages. Again, please do your own research on this, but it's just my belief system. But at the same to- token, you know, I was diagnosed in February and I've had, yeah, I've had, I decided to do surgery. I went through chemo. I went through, I'm actually having my last radiation treatment on Friday. Woo-hoo. And I am living my best life ever. Like, yeah. I am not like, and don't get me wrong, I have some days where I'm like, what's going why why me but then i'm like okay whatever i'm learning my lessons i'm going to support people but i am like truly living my best life ever having my one of my best financial years i've ever had in my life doing what i love and helping people and i'm only working truth be told i'm working at probably like 50 60 percent capacity right now because of all the treatment i've gone through so it's like I'm living my best life ever, having my best financial year because of this work I do. That's all I have to say. (laughs) Oh my God. It's freaking awesome. Like no one would ever know I'm, I'm in the middle of radiation right now. No No one knew I was going through chemo because I did cold capping. So if you, you know, if you know someone that has to go through chemo or chooses to go through chemo, tell them to look up cold capping. Mm -hmm. It helps save your hair. It saved probably 70% of my hair. Yay. Thank you for that. Somebody's going to get yeah. a lot of from that. Yeah, yeah. We have a couple people in our program right now that were given not so good diagnoses recently. And okay. so, yeah, kind of going through that different type of stuff and just again, honoring everyone who's, you know, brave enough to do the work. And yeah, I think that it's so powerful and so healing and so transformational just from all the things, but again, Mindset. belief system Mindset. is everything. You go- in- Exactly. It's your mind. It truly really is your mindset. Yeah. And I've never seen, I mean, Bridget, you're just so like your energy is contagious and you're just always on fire. And I just don't even, it's like, how can I be like Bridget when I grow up? Oh, you are, <laughs> you're your own you. <laughs> that yes. fire and that, yeah, just drive and you're just knowing what you want and going after it is just amazing. So people are lucky to have you as their NLP trainer for sure. And you you definitely are walking your walk. So thank you so much. And yeah, so I'm giving my last NLP training uh, this coming fall. We've got eight amazing human beings who are in it. Um, If anyone wants to jump on that train last minute, um, you know where to find me. Um, And for anyone who knows they can't do it this fall, but wants to get on the NLP train, happy to hand you off to Bridget. How can people find out about your trainings? Yes, there's so many ways. Uh, my my website is powerandjoycoachingacademy.com. That's my website, powerandjoycoachingacademy.com. Mm-hmm. My email, you can email me at Bridget, B-R-I-G-E-T-T-E, at Bridget, B-R-I-G-E-T-T-E, Sobus, S-O-B-U-S, dot com. Um, my cell phone number. Should I say my cell phone number? Would that be <laughs> Do you want it on the internet for the rest of time? It's everywhere. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How many people? If you want to, oh go God. for it. I mean, That's your you call. may text me at 773-387-1826. Just reference to where you got this number. And I will text you back. If you just say the word hi, 
how are you? I most likely will not respond back because I think you're a spammer. <laughs> My phone number is on the internet everywhere. I get, te- I've gotten text messages from, you know, strange you. men finding me on Instagram. Let's, I'll just be real. Oh, and then I block, <laughs> I block them. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's not like my phone number is hidden. It's my business number. You I know. hear you. This is yes. how reachable please reach out. I would, is. yeah, mm-hmm. reach out, say hi. I am also on Facebook. Um, Facebook, I got, you know, personal perfect coach Bridget Sobis is, uh, coach Bridget Sobis is Instagram and Facebook. And I'm also on LinkedIn. So I'm all, I'm on so many things. She's everywhere. If you don't see her, then you're looking in the wrong places. She's everywhere. Ooh, yeah. So happy that you're also here on the Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss podcast, yes. Bridget. I'm so grateful to know you. Thank you for I'm your time you. and your energy. Congratulations on your last radiation treatment on Friday. Yeah. So Can grateful that I was able to be with you this now. summer. Yes. Hope I can too. be with you again sometime soon. Absolutely, for sure. Awesome. Thanks everyone for listening and see you next time. If you are serious about taking action on your struggle with food, body, and weight, then this is for you. Go ahead and text the word hypnosis to 855-BE-ALIVE. That's 855-232-5483. Immediately after texting that number, you will get access to our free training that will tell you why you can't figure the food, body, and weight thing out, why you can't keep weight off even after you've been successful in the past, and how to actually overcome it, including a mini hypnosis session at the end. Don't miss out. Text the word hypnosis to 855-BE-ALIVE. That's 855-232-5483.